So here's a follow-up to my home network build. Uh, I received a ton of awesome feedback on that and it was received really well. Uh, and there was also a lot of great suggestions within the comment section on how I could build this thing to be more efficient with airflow and all types of stuff. Additionally, the USW 16 PoE that's in this system doesn't deliver enough wattage for the cameras and APs that I have set up around my house. So I'm gonna be swapping that out with the USW24 PoE Pro. Uh, I wanna get into the unboxing of that and take a closer look at that. I went way overboard with uh, you know PoE and the wattage delivery within that system uh, because I want to have the leg room to stretch if I need to. Uh, probably never ever get close to using 400 watts, but I know if I ever implement an additional AP or another camera, I won't have to worry about the wattage consumption usage or the utilization on that switch because it's uh, it's a powerhouse. Anyways, let's go ahead and unbox the USW24 PoE Pro. So here we are with the Unify USW24 PoE Pro. This is the new switch that I decided to implement within my system because of its wattage delivery capabilities. So this is quite a large box. As we flip it around, you can see the specs and I'll, if you wanted to, you could pause it and take a look at what's included in this thing. Ubiquity is very Apple-esque with their unboxing experience, as you can see with that peel part thing there. We'll go ahead and flip it up so you can get a look at inside. So there's the accessory box that's standard. And then the actual switch is quite a substantial beast, if I do say so myself. Before we look at the switch, I wanna take a look at what comes in the accessory kit. You get the power cable, uh, you get rack mounting accessories and tabletop feet. If you, were, you just had it on like a table or something, you can do that as well. Rack mount uh, brackets. And then you got the documentation, but nobody cares about that. Let's get into the switch. So looking at the face of the switch, you can see there's a little label there that says USW Pro. There's the mini OLED display here. You can take action on device, look at status of ports, look at status of network, all types of things right on the device. I like that a lot about Unify equipment. This also allows you to use their augmented reality tool to pair with your phone. And then you can look at individual ports. A really nice, neat addition to why this system is so nice for me. Uh, moving up right along, you got the RJ45 ports. 16 of them are... Uh, PoE plus, which is AT, I believe. And then you got eight that are PoE plus plus, which are PT. Power ratings on that are in relation to what's labeled on the face of the device. You can see very clearly what's plus plus and what's not. You got the SFP plus ports here, rated at 10 gigs. With that being said, that's the front of the device. The top of the device doesn't have a whole lot to showcase. On the back of the device, you can see the power, and then there's also a uh, yeah, UPS connect that you can connect with their power backup system. You don't have to use the cable, you can just connect it via this port here. And it's nice that it's covered, because you know a lot of folks won't be using this, but it's available to you if you wanted to use it in a you know more professional environment. On the side, there's the four threads, and it's the same on the other that allow you to uh, put those rack mount uh, brackets on. Um, I, one thing I did forget about the front that I wanted to mention that there is a reset button right here. If you wanted to a hardware reset, you just get a, you know, a paper clip or something and you can reset the whole system. Let's go ahead and start putting this thing in. So you guys have shown me a ton of love with this network cabinet build and I've taken a lot of feedback under consideration. I wanna get in here and kind of show you why I'm uh, upgrading my USW 16 PoE. Uh, you can see that there's a high utilization of wattage with this and all of the stuff that I'm using on it. It's powering cameras around the house and, you know, access points and stuff like that. It just doesn't have enough oomph to get me through uh, a functioning network. So with that, I am putting in the USW24 PoE Pro and that delivers 400 watts of capacity. Fix this problem. Uh, as well as give me uh, options to expand when I finish my basement and add more access points to my home. I don't, I don't foresee myself adding more, but I do want to have the leg room to do so, especially if I move somewhere else and I need more, you know, wattage delivered through PoE. This video won't be as long as my initial build, which I'll leave carded here if you want to go check that out. As you can, uh, my UDM Pro is having some issues with the screen here. I don't know, and power cycle it or something. At any rate, I just wanted to kind of highlight why I purchased the USW24 PoE Pro. Uh, I need that wa extra wattage. I probably went overboard. I could have saved, you know, a couple hundred bucks and got something different. 
but I need to resolve this high utilization issue and stop my camera from dropping off, especially at night with the external IR extenders and stuff like that. I think it looks pretty clean as is, but a lot of recommendations that you guys made were very valid and I wanna fix all that and make it look, uh, or make it function even better. All right, I got it plugged in, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this SFP plus cable in and get this thing adopted within my system so I can transfer all the stuff before I remove the USW uh, 16 PoE. It's showing up, so I'm gonna go ahead and adopt the device. Then we gotta wait for it to get ready and download any pending updates, and then we can move into shutting this whole system down and then breaking it apart. So here's where I took a lot of critiques on my initial build. I put this expansion bay back a little bit so I could have a little bit of space here, but a lot of you guys advised that I should put it towards the front so the back could be free for ventilation's sake. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I just made a new mistake here. Uh, again, not a sysadmin or anything like that, but I am learning along with you and I really appreciate your guys' feedback because now I'm gonna push this forward, maybe drop it down a little bit and clean this up so there's a nice clear uh, pathway for ventilation to go through the back of it. So there's one thing that was recommended to me quite a bit is putting my uninterruptible power supply on some rails so I could pull it out on the bottom of this rack. I'm not gonna do that. I, I could have purchased the $36 rails and just thrown this thing on there and then pulled it in and out as needed, made adjustments to it if it dies or when it dies, you know, change out the cells and all that type of stuff. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I probably am gonna regret it, but anyways, I heard you. I know that they're available. Eventually, I will put rack rails on this UPS, probably the third version of this uh, build, because at some point, I'm going to move my Synology over to a rack-mounted solution. At that point, I'll probably be ready to purchase those $40 slide racks, you know, those slide rails for the UPS and then make a further adjustment to this whole build. So, I mean, if you stay subscribed, you'll see this eventually evolve into that because it's really tough to fit the Synology disk stations within this confined space because of their form factor. Again, I, at some point, I will get a rack mounted solution. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so I got everything cleared up for the back and everything's just gonna flow through the back and come up and around and out through here. I think it's ready to power on and uh, start to get it, get all the panels back on and whatnot, keep all the dust out, because this is in my unfinished basement. Turn that on, get that powered on. Looks like my uh, Synology. Get that booted up. UDM Pro is starting, USW is starting. Everything's looking nice and clean. Cleaned out the little bit of dust that I had. I am really happy with the suggestions that you guys made for me. Um, there's, It's a lot more cleaner. It looks and will probably perform much better and these AC Infinity fans won't come on as often. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some beauty shots of this beautiful rack. And again, thank you everybody for the, the suggestions and the feedback in the comment section of my first video of building this out. It has helped me come to this, uh, what it is today. Another thing that I'm going to point out that I didn't do that I got a lot of comments on is the patch panel. At some point I'll install that, maybe, you know, at that last version after I get a rack mount solution for my Synology NAS. I think that would be beneficial to this because then I can just put the patch panel up at the top and then drive all the cords down and make, you know, make my custom cables and it would look a lot cleaner. I just left a little space in between the UDM Pro and the USW Pro here so I could run the, the Ethernet cables through it. I, I think it looks pretty clean. It's, it's, it's nice as it is now, but I do see now that if I had a patch panel, it'd be much easier to kind of route my cabling. If you're interested in any of the items that I used in this video, maybe you want to recreate it. Uh, I'll leave links in the description. Full disclosure with those, those are my affiliate links. So shopping through them, they do give me a kickback based on your purchase, but don't cost you anything in addition to your purchases or your orders. It's just a way for you to support content creation here on this channel. Well, that about does it for me in this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas and I will catch you in the next one.